That's right. This is Lover of Ladies, and I am at the Ambrose Manor. Olivia's right. It would be so crazy to not stop. Thanks, Drinks the Butler. I won't take that advice, but thanks for the suggestion. She is, honestly. I'd wager we're for a fight. Oh, I know. Question is, how bad of a fight is it gonna be? I see one right now. Pull up! Oh, I ran out of bullets. Great. Okay. I know Olivia said not to kill her daughter. I'm gonna try and follow through with that promise. I'm not guaranteeing it. I'm gonna try and see if I can do it without hurting her, but... Like I said, I'm not, I'm not making any promises at this point. It sucks how it has to lead to this, but honestly, it is what it is. And I do have two of my favorite companions with me, so... Nokia, get him! Okay. Not bad. Honestly, not bad. Okay, so being that this door is opened... Okay. Is Olivia here? No. Her daughter's not here either. Okay. Okay, so unlock elevator. Got that. Log in. Ambrose O. Wait, what's this? This morning I gave birth to a healthy child. Perhaps that's a strange distinction to call her healthy. But after all I've endured to finally meet her, it matters. That she exists at all against the odds matters. I will call her Wilhelmia. After my late brother, William. I hope the law is kinder to her than it was to him. I hope for many things, truthfully, that she be smart and shrewd. That she be strong, relentless, undeniable. Most of all, hope for her a steel spine. That she does not bend when Halcyon would break her. That she should be stronger than I. That is so sad. Olivia wished for all these things. And she is all these things, but... For the wrong energy, honestly. I must find Minnie a wet nurse. She demands to be fed throughout the day and night, and I simply cannot get a single thing done. I mean, that's motherhood, what do you expect? The nurse would need to be exceptional, smart, educated by means. Minnie must have the best start if she's going to survive the pit of vipers that is the Byzantium elite. Then there is the matter of a governess. I can't watch the child constantly. Now if I'm to do my work, how soon must I begin looking? Naturally, she'll have to be exceptional as well. And exceptional Byzantiums don't exactly grow on trees. I will persuade Harvey to investigate this for me. The man has little else to do. Alright, so Harvey is the dad. I don't understand how anyone of ambition has time to keep a journal. I certainly don't. Yet here I am, indulging myself, Minnie's influence, no doubt. Her behavior concerns me. She's clingy, emotional, 
At five, she should be starting it to show some personality, not crying for her mother when I leave for another stint on Gorgon. She's five, Olivia. Stop being insensitive. This must be the fault of Marie, her governess, as Minnie certainly didn't learn this behavior from me. I'll have to fire the woman. It's clear she's not capable of instilling in Minnie a correct understanding of how to behave. Bro, this baby is five. Are you kidding me? Harvey despairs of ever finding a governess who meets my preposterous standards. He and I went in circles on the issue for hours, but he came around to my thinking eventually. Why shouldn't I want what's best for my daughter? Maybe I'll fire him too. How can you fire your own husband, bro? I'm at my wit's end with Minnie. At 13, she shouldn't already master basic chemistry, physics, and mathematics, but she can barely handle long division. She struggles to remember the simplest equations and formulas, no matter how many times her governess wraps her knuckles. By the time I was her age, I've already made dynamite in my grandfather's laboratory. The only thing Minnie's making explode is my head. Her father asked me why we don't just send her to boarding school, but I abhor the thought of her surrounded by those cuddled idiots. More alarming still, she's begun to show an interest in romance serials and painting. She may have a strong grasp of color theory, and she shows some promise with watercolors, but surely that's the result of her education and spectroscoping, not any innate skill. What value has art anyway? She gave me a truly dreadful painting of Francis this morning, and I haven't a clue what to do with it. Perhaps I'll stuff it in my desk. We'll have a good laugh over it when she's grown and finally come to her senses. I could see why your daughter hates you now. Lucian appeared at the manor this morning. I thought him here for me. So finally wring my neck after Arleigh's tiff, but no, it was much worse than that. He had come to speak to Minnie. No need to guess why. She's taken it upon herself to manage the household these last few years. Since neither her father nor I have the time, or frankly, inclination. Under her watch, the staff's productivity has increased 35%, while reducing our costs an astonishing 67%. We've saved tens of thousands of bits. Harvey tipped Lucian off, I expect. Now he wants to bring her on to help manage the Gorgon facilities, which I refuse over Minnie's vocivious presentations. She cried after he left. I only wish that I could tell her why. How did I raise such a willful daughter? She's no longer requesting to join the project, but demanding. I'm ready. I can help you. It's what I want. She doesn't know what she's asking. Gorgon is not safe. Come out X is in the air. It's infected the water and the food. It's no longer just the test subjects and the laboratory techs in danger now. Even the general staff are beginning to feel its effects. Even I feel it. I'm tied up in knots. I know what I must do. The only way I can persuade her away, but it'll kill me to do it. Minnie, I'll say. You just don't have what it takes. You're too shallow, too simple, too weak. She'll hate me for it. I'm sure it would destroy her, but it will work. She'll be safe. That's all I care about now. Wow, the one time her mother finally shows emotion to her. Harvey is gone, his body's still alive, but the man I married is dead. He broke into my office and stole the last of my release candidate ambulance, busted the door to splinters in his withdrawal furry. I've chartered a shuttle to bring him to the facility for medical care, even convinced Periantha to oversee the transfer. He didn't want to, was worried it wasn't safe, but I begged him. Harvey killed the shuttle crew, Privianda too, but the shuttle wouldn't take off without its pilot, and I couldn't stop his raging, so I left the ship on the landing pad for days, watched him tear it to pieces with his bare hands. He lost a lot of blood. I brought him inside once he finally passed out and shoved him into a status solution tube. My work did this to him. Mine. Me. I did this. I'll tell Lucian. Surely now he'll delay the release. Surely after this. Wow, so the husband became... The husband became... A marauder. I take from these entries that Mother was severe with her editorial pen. This is but one version of her, carefully curated and not the one I wanted to find. Where's her unvarnished steam of consciences? 
Where is her spontaneous brilliance? The search continues. My efforts were invariably steer me to Gorgon. What then, Minnie? What then? Oh, man. This is crazy. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. What is that? Ooh, I'll take this. But yeah, so based off the terminals, the mother has always been distant. Very distant. Okay, so she's not here. She definitely has taken the thing. And I assume it's downstairs. But yeah, the mother has always been terribly distant. Emotionless. And I feel sorry for Minnie. I really do. But I gotta stop the project nonetheless, you know? Alright, let's go. Oh, man. Nothing good ever come out of a place like this, Captain. Because of the heebie-jeebies. Damn. Someone really didn't want this place found. I know, right? Let's go. Whoa, what the hell? I'll take that, thank you. Whoa! This is really intense. Dead. Dead as hell. Minnie is really working so hard to make sure we don't succeed. So sad. Hey, yo! Hey, yo! You hurting my co-worker? Oh, shit. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, my goodness. This is horrible. Okay, okay. So, I'm currently a little bit high right now. Take out that machine, girl. There you go. Can we even take down this machine? How do you miss, bro? How do you miss? Okay, perfect. Move! Move! This! You scared me! Don't you ever do that again, you hear me? I thought I killed you! Okay. So, what are we doing again? The protocol. Right in here. Oh my goodness. Of course. Damn, this thing is eating bullets, bro. Like... Oh, shit. Oh no! I've been hit. Thankfully, my health bar is so high, it doesn't even affect me like that anymore. Okay. Seriously, though, how many- Didn't I warn you not to set foot in here until the job was done? You should have listened to my advice. Let's talk about this, Minnie. There's nothing to discuss. I can fix Adrena time without you, and certainly without Mother. You wasted your time coming here, and worse, you wasted mine. But I won't let anything stand in the way of progress. Listen. What if you and your mother joined forces to cure the Marauders? You'll surprise me, Captain. Once we fix the chemistry of Adrena time, the Marauder problem will simply take care of itself. But a lot of folks are going to suffer in the meantime. And you don't even know if it'll work. Exactly. Yeah. Fight horrific science with horrific science. That's always worked out in the past. The days of the old Adrena time are numbered, and marauders are bound for extinction. If the marauders don't get a fix, they're just rampage across the colony. Insane 
16 people addicted to drugs are mother's problem. Am I to be held accountable for her mess? It ain't about who's accountable. Those people are hurting, and they're hurting others. You could help them. Besides, mother is determined to ruin everything she touches. No, First she wasn't. Time, then our family, and now my ambition. <sighs> Damn. I can't even, okay. If you won't compromise, stand down. This doesn't have to get ugly. Stand down? I think not, Captain. People want to buy clean drugs, and I want to sell them. Under my leadership, Adrena Time will live up to its promise. Unlike certain mothers. Listen, I don't want to fight you, Minnie. Don't force my hand. Farewell, Captain. If it wasn't already obvious... Damn! Minnie! Fuck! Okay. Don't hurt Minnie. That's all I have to say. Damn these weapons. I don't like this. I felt like if my persuasion or science levels were a lot higher, I would have convinced her otherwise, but I'm just so pissed off. I don't want to kill Minnie. I've read the journals. Minnie's just misunderstood. She has the right energy, just the wrong execution. And the mom doesn't want me to kill her either, so... Yo, cut it out. There you go, come on. Done and done. Do I have enough ammo for this one? Oh, only 39, that's cute. Yeah, I guess. I'm I'm still pretty sad and bummed out. I guess I gotta pull out this number. This lucky n number. Wait, no one's there? Oh, thank goodness. Alright, protocol. Whoa! Did I just explode the facility in Gorgon? You finished it, Captain. You've put Gorgon down once and for all. I only wish that Minnie had seen reason. The good we could have done together. Join me for a toast in the drawing room. I do believe you're due a reward. After all we've seen of this lady, are we sure this ain't a trap? Hand to law, Captain. I mean you no harm. Okay, it's a date. No, it most certainly is not. Okay. Damn, so serious. I forgot she is so serious and analytical. Analytical, whatever. What's this? Olivia, doctor, mother. I rest my fingers on these keys. I read your words, but I don't feel any closer to you. You're a stranger. Someone who peers out at me from a cold, reflective screen. You should have let me in. Minnie. Yo, I'm so sad, bro. I'm so happy I don't have to kill Minnie, because that was my concern, honestly. Wait a minute. How did she die?! Minnie's dead? This is not a happy ending. I can't believe Minnie died. I killed someone's kid. I killed someone who had hopes and dreams. Like, I killed someone who just wanted a change. Uh, I don't know how I feel about this. 
Discreet cave? What the hell is this? How long? Wait. How long has it been since anyone asked Old Mayberry to tidy up the planters or rake the garden? Hmm. Mrs. Ali hasn't shouted for me in ages, and I can't think of the last time Mr. Harvey came around to marvel at his fish. Where is everyone? Week two. I've eaten so many beans, and I don't tolerate them in the best of times. But I dare not go into the mansion in search of food. Think of the dust I'll cascade off my unworthy shoulders and onto the fine tile. Can't go inside. Won't go inside. I don't belong. I'm not of the family. Week five? Out of beans, but I won't trespass, even if the house is empty. I'm not of the family. The auto mechs know. They watch my every move. The cave is where I belong. Year two. Time is a lie. There's no telling how long I've been here, munching on leaves and burying my excrement in the yard. No one's coming for old Mayberry. Lo loyal Mayberry. Faithful. Mayberry. I mean, thank you for these. I'll take it. If you're not going to use it, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. I just love taking shit, honestly. I don't care about that. I wonder what happened to Mayberry. Wait, wait, hold on. I just said, I wonder what happened to Mayberry, and watch me find this person's dead body. I don't know how I would feel about that, honestly. All right, let's... Wow, this cave has been here the whole time. Uh, I'll take that. Daily routine. Sweep the tranquility garden for Mrs. Olivia. Oil the fish for Mr. Harvey. Repeat. When they hired me on as groundskeeper, I assumed there'd be grounds to keep. I'm not even allowed inside the manor. Everyone told me the Ambrose family keeps to themselves, but they're a bunch of hermits. Save for the little one. Guess I ought to find a hobby. Mr. Harvey dropped his key card in the pond. I'll hold on to it in case he ever comes looking, but I won't go near the house. We don't want to get between Mrs. Olivia and, his, and her research. Right. Okay, I'll take that. But wow, he wasn't even allowed inside the house. That's crazy. I've never heard such nonsense before in my life. I can't believe Minnie's dead, though. I just... I don't know. I really do feel depressed. I promised her I was going to kill the kid, and yet she's dead. I don't know. I just wish my persuasion and science levels were high enough to just help her out. I was this close to convincing her. I really was. Captain. I believe a celebration is in order. Your kid's dead, the asshole. The project is dead. And we are not. Wow. Wow. Seems like someone's already had a couple. My only child is dead, law rest her soul. And so is my life's work. I hope you'll forgive the indulgence. Shall we toast? <sighs> I didn't do this for you. Your motives interest me less than your actions, Captain. What matters is that when forced to choose sides, you picked Halcyons. You know what? Give her the finger with both. <laughs> Should I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. You've made your point. It's funny. When Spacer's Choice released Adrena Time to the public and began the Marauder Crisis, and I sabotaged all the Gorgon facilities, mm. I thought that was the end for me. Then you came along and changed everything. I find myself at loose ends now, Captain. What happens next? Well, I've got some questions you can answer. 
I'll gladly humor one or two for the executioner of Gorgon. So, what happened between you and Minnie? Children do not remain so forever. She grew up, and we grew apart. I could have tried harder to reach her, to support Tried? Her. I know. Tried? But I confess, I always found my work more engaging than child-rearing. Wow. And Minnie and I had so little in common. In the end, my distance seemed a blessing. You're fucking disgusting. And honestly, honestly, not every parent deserves a child. But you know what? That's not the story your personal logs tell. Ah. I see my daughter wasn't the only one poking about the estate in my absence. You lied to me. You're absolutely right. I did. You've done me and Halcyon an incredible service in finally putting Gorgon to rest, Captain. But we are still strangers. I don't like liars. I understand. I don't like myself much either. You push her away to protect her from Spacer's choice. For all the good it did. They got their hooks in her eventually. I might not be much of a parent, Captain. But that doesn't mean I didn't love my daughter. Well, you could have fooled me! safety has always been my first priority. That it meant staying far away from me. Well, we all make sacrifices for those we love. You love your well, daughter? I answer for you before you go, Captain. Wow, could have fooled me. You know what? Hmm, what's another question? Where have you been hiding out for the past five years? Down there, on Gorgon. That must have been lonely. It was. But I had my work to keep me company. Work and a great many number of ghosts. So you couldn't bother to let me know you were alive? Knowing I lived would have only put her at risk. I destroyed Spacer's Choice's premier research facility. If they'd hurt her to get to me, I'd never forgive myself. Well, she's dead now, so... But why stay there? I was obsessed with the notion that I might find a cure for the Marauders. That I could right the tremendous wrong we'd done to them. I think I was a little mad. Perhaps I still am. I wanted to do it all on my own. To fix everything myself. But the problem of the Marauders was too complex for me to solve. And with Gorgon gone, it will remain that way. You know what? I'm surprised the Marauders didn't kill you. Not for lack of trying. I had some close calls in the early years. But Marauders aren't especially observant. Easy enough to tiptoe past with practice. Why did you start the Ardrina Time Project to begin with? Before I explain, there's a critical detail you must understand. Okay. Halcyon is in the midst of a slow-moving crisis, one that will not improve on its own. The board knows this, but they're not lifting a finger to address it. In the absence of their leadership, I thought I could bridge the gap. So I tried to create a drug to expand our workers' minds and improve their bodies. Help them work harder, longer, and smarter. With everyone at their best, I thought the colony might be able to innovate itself out of this hole. That sounds uncomfortably like eugenics. Don't be preposterous. Eugenics is bunk science. A charlatan's game. Snake oil for a pathetic elite who want to believe that they've earned their privileges and that the poor have earned their suffering. My work is nothing like theirs. Don't tar it with their brush. If Spacer's Choice had given me time to perfect Adrena Time, I know I could have done it. My drug could have saved Halcyon. Sounds like a bunch of excuses to me. Don't presume to know what I have and have not tried to do to help Halcyon, Captain. Though that isn't to say I couldn't have tried harder or... Or enlisted my peers' help. You're right about that. Was there anything else you wanted to discuss 
before I bid you farewell. Did you really sabotage all the Gorgon facilities? I certainly did. Spacer's Choice's negligence sent Halcyon into a tailspin, and they refused to pull Adrena time from the market to stop it. They forced my hand. I ended the project the only way I could, by destroying everything. Why not blow up the facility right then? I had faith a strapping heroine would come along someday and do it for me. I'm joking, obviously. You were a bolt from the blue. Or the black, as it were. What was the real reason? Two reasons, actually. I couldn't bear to kill so many of my staff. Even though our work killed exponentially more colonists. And? I didn't want to give up on my research, even after all it had cost us. In those early days of the Marauder epidemic, I still believed I could fix Adrenatar. As time went on, I became convinced I could cure the Marauders. But once again, Spacer's Choice has forced my hand, this time through my daughter. And I have to let that dream die too. How did you sabotage the project exactly? I began by shredding all of the personnel files in the Office of Creative Incubation. Clarence was so alarmed by my barbarism, he forgot to call the corporate guard. All his precious numbers and all their precious rows. I should have set fire to them. What happened next? I released the test subjects from human inquiry and auditing. The ghastly things we did to those people. Marion was screaming, I think. Though by this point, my memory's hazy. Everything had gone a bit red. My blood was up, you know. If anyone had dared to stop me, I would have snapped them in two. And the chem lab? Ah, compound harvesting, enrichment, and molecularization. My second home. Well, my first home, really. Jasper had been doing some personal work there after hours. Something about primals and mirror neurons. I set the primals free. They tore through the lab like it was made of wet toilet paper. The primals slaughtered the scientist? I know. I remember. I wasn't myself by then. Grief and horror had taken me to a dark place. Anyway. That's how it happened. Gorgon's first fall. It's not a pretty tale, but the truth rarely is. Thanks for clearing that up. I would say my pleasure, but there's nothing very pleasant about this. Never mind. Of course. Anything else? Or shall I let you see yourself out? Let's get down to brass tacks. Where's my reward? The satisfaction of a job well done isn't enough for you? I'm only joking, of course. Please take this, with my thanks. It's not much, but you deserve recognition for your efforts. I know your crew played no small part in this as well. Thank you. Just trying to do my part. You're welcome, ma'am. I hope you take this life and do something better with it. Halcyon owes you both a tremendous debt. Hmm. <laughs> Gratitude is the least you owe us, lady. You're right. I can never repay you for your efforts here. I only hope the law honors you accordingly. Well, it's time we stop looking back and turn our eyes to the stars. Where will the future lead you, Captain? I got a mad scientist to rescue. I'd expect nothing less from the hero of Gorgon. In any case, I do believe this is the end. Law willing, Adrena time is dead for good, and the Marauders will die out with it. Goodbye, Captain, and thank you again. May the stellar wind be ever at your back. Goodbye, Olivia, and good luck. Thank you for watching this episode. This is Lover of Ladies, and I'll see you next week.